Well, good morning, all. Hi, Kip. Hi, Barry and Margo. Hi, Janet Lyons. Kevin and Chris Vaughn. Nancy Horvath, good morning. Hi, Linda Clark. People piling in. Good to hear from you all. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Hi, Larry and Carolyn Thomas. Mose and Marcia Nolan, good morning. Joanne Butters, good morning. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Scott Johnson. Hi, Joan Riggs. Yes, it's Sherry Keyes' birthday, so I hope she shows up. Hi, Nancy Sparks. Hi, Aunt Mary. There's the birthday girl right there, Sherry Keys. Good morning. Hi, Amy Bowerman. So it's what, the 35th, Sherry, something like that? Ann Winslow, good morning. Hi, Norma Bentley. Just wait, it's nine o'clock. We've got 24 folks with us, or 24 devices, more than that, as far as that. And Jessica Riggs, happy birthday to you too. Hi, Paul Wolf. Hi, Ken Woods. Hi, Linda Wolf. And Barbara Wolf. It's like the Wolfs all showed up at once here. Joy and Steve Yambor are with us. Good morning to you. I had to turn the heat on again. Had turned it off, hoping that was it, but spring wasn't done yet. Hi, Sandy Sauerbeck, or winter, or, well, early spring wasn't done yet. How's that? Barbara Shoot, good morning to you. So it's a Monday, and um, we had. Um, Sometimes Mondays are tough. <laughs> we had uh, there's a lot of times that um, in the in the fall and winter I would often take Mondays off as as my off day. Uh, not so much recently, but that also means that sometimes Mondays are a little slow. They're um, when I say they're slow. Hi, Robin Allen. Um, hi, Tracy Crutz. When I say they're slow, it's it's um, you know, preaching takes a lot out of you and so a lot of times um you know it's good to kind of take a take a rest i kind of feel like today's that one of those days but we got some stuff to do some planning for next week we'll get that done hi norma bentley and winslow's asking if knows anybody can repair a refrigerator i don't know but I know somebody who runs the Down River and Friends Facebook site, so I'm sure that I'm sure that Carrie might be able to point you in a direction. Right? All right. Well, we've got 29 folks on, so we'll get going here. And uh, our devotions here for today, the 12th of April. Start off with our morning, our psalm. That's going to be 97, Psalm 97 today. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame.
those who make uh, make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. All right, and oh, this is interesting. We are starting into Daniel here in our prophetic books. So this is Daniel, and it's the first chapter, verses 1 through 21. So um, um, Daniel is considered to be somewhat of an apocalyptic book. An apocalypse, I mean, we all heard of the apocalypse, right? But really what the apocalypse is, is that when um, when divine God breaks into the world to do to upset the natural order uh, in order uh, to put things into um, his ways. So uh, that's just that's really the definition of apocalypse. And um, so we certainly see that, you know, we see that in several books, Revelation being the big one. Um, and then we just read out of that Psalm 97, that that was the Hebrew understanding of when the Lord comes, when 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 God, when the Savior comes, um, that all the other uh, religions, because there there were many numbers and they would uh, worship idols, um, that uh, the how sovereign God is would be demonstrated. So um, we're going to pick up here in Daniel. And you will hear kind of that same thread coming through. Um, and there's some difficult <laughs> pronunciations in here. So um, if I stop and stumble, that's just because I'm trying to remember. At one point, I knew how to pronounce them all. And sometimes I got to work my way through them again. All right, here we go. The word of the Lord. In the third year of the reign of King uh, Jehoiakim of Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord let King Jehoiakim of Judah fall into his power, as well as some of the vessels of the house of God. Then he brought, brought to the land of Shinar and placed the vessels in the treasury of his gods. Then the king commanded, uh, this is uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, I believe, then the king commanded his palace master, uh, Ashpenaz, to bring some of the Israelites of the royal family and of the nobility, young men without physical defect and handsome, versed in every branch of wisdom, endowed with knowledge and insight, and competent to serve in the king's palace. They were to be taught the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the royal rations of food and wine. They were to be educated for three years, so that all at the end of that time, they could be stationed in the king's court. Among them were Daniel, Haniah, Mishael, and Azariah from the tribe of Judah. The palace master gave them other names. David, he called uh, Belshazzar. Hananiah, he called Shadrach. Mishael, he called uh, Meshach, and Azariah he called uh, Abed, Abednego. Abednego, yeah, thank you. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the royal rations of food and water, so he asked the palace master to allow him not to defile himself. Now God allowed Daniel to receive favor and compassion from the palace master. The palace master said to Daniel, I am afraid of my lord the king. He has appointed your food and your drink. If he should see you in poorer condition than the other young men of your age, 
you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel asked the guard whom the palace master had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. You can then compare our appearance with the appearance of the young men who eat the royal rations and deal with your servants according to what you observe. So he agreed to the proposal and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, it was observed that they appeared better and fatter than all the young men who had been eating the royal rations. So the guard continued to withdraw their royal rations and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and skill in every aspect of literature and wisdom. Daniel also had insight into old visions and dreams. At the end of that time that the king had set us for them to be brought in, the palace master brought them into the presence of Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke with them. And among them all, no one was found to compare with Daniel, Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they were stationed in the king's court. So every matter of wisdom and understanding concerning which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and uh, enchanters in this whole kingdom. And Daniel continued there until the first year of King Cyrus. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So we, in essence, we have a, a spy, right? Um, so Nebuchadnezzar comes in and, um, and um, uh, basically overruns Judah. And we find out here that um, you would think that that means that everybody is done, but he, he actually goes and picks um, some of the young men because he wants to train them up and make them into his vassals. So we're told about these four, which include Daniel, uh, but they don't buy into it all. Um, you know, the, they, they, were, they were turning down um, quality and quantity of food that was not available to any of the other uh, Hebrew people, uh, but they wanted to remain uh, pure. So they did not eat that food. And um, the palace master who was in charge of them was saying, hey, look, um, you know, I kind of get you, but um, if you if you don't eat this food and you start to really look, you know, poorly, it's going to look bad on me. So Daniel says, well, let's test this. Just give us vegetables. So they eat vegetables and they turn out that they actually end up looking better than the other guys. And they are taught and then they assume their positions as really prophets. Um, and uh, advisors to Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, this is the very beginning, so there's a lot more to come in. It mentions here, it finishes with King Cyrus. And Cyrus um, is the king that over, that defeats the Babylonian Empire. So, there you go. We'll hear more about that. Daniel goes into the lion's den, if you remember. All right, New Testament reading. First John. You know that you know we have three letters from John. We have the Gospel of John, but we also have three letters, first, second, third. And uh, here's this is out of First John, the very beginning, first chapter, verses one through ten. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our own eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the Word of Life. This life was revealed. And we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is why in the Reformed uh, uh, denominations, including Presbyterianists, that we always, we always have um, uh, a confession of sin, or a separation, because um, we all fall short of the glory of God. And sometimes in the preamble to that, we'll actually quote out of First John. Uh, so this is why. This is um, we're we're trying to to cleanse ourselves, and when we say cleansing. Um, it's part of that is a self-awareness of the fact that you know we ain't all that we think we are, and uh, and we have to understand that. And part of that means is that we have to be humble, but we also have to be understanding that uh, you know uh, nobody's perfect either. So we'll go on here to our gospel reading. We're in the Gospel of John still, and this is chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> Um, this is um, this is pre-crucifixion stuff in John, but it's getting close. So here we go. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that the son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to these whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that you may be one as we are one. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. This is Jesus' great prayer for us, uh, not for himself. He's saying, okay. Uh, you know the time has come that uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay this penance for everybody. Um, but here's my prayer for the people that you entrusted to me. And he's saying, look, they've done a good job. They've really done a good job. They've listened. So uh, please, please um, take them, make them your children. That's really a touching, touching prayer. All right, I'm gonna go back over here. And, uh, see where we are. So the other thing, folks, um, I'm getting I'm getting some emails. You know, there's some bad people in the world, and um, you know, we talk about evil in the world. Well, here's an evil in the world. There are, there are scammers that go around and they try to get money from uh, church members, and they. They, uh, what they do is they, you know, they actually have automated bots that go through and they, they find church websites and then they search it for emails of pastors. Um, uh, you know, somehow they get uh, email lists. And when I first got here, um, it's directly related to how often um, my email appears on the web. Uh, when I first got here, of course, we were doing uh, publishing that a lot. We had a number, a great number of uh, scammers that uh, they come and they, they get a free email account from Gmail and they make it look like that it's my email. And, um, but it's not. And then they'll say, usually it's saying, hey, how are you? I prayed for you. I, I, I'm, 
I, I need a favor from you. And then they're asking you to email them back. And then when you do, they continue the, the farce and they say, hey, I need, usually, I need gift cards uh, for this ministry. And they want you to, and then they want you to go out and buy them and then give the numbers on the back. Well, folks, it's just a scam. I would never, ever, ever do that. So we dealt with this a little bit over a year ago and um, then they went away. It just it looks like somebody else did it. So now I've gotten four or five folks from the church that have said, hey, I got your email or, or this isn't really you. I hope nobody's responded to it. But uh, the, what to do is to report that email. Um, so or ignore it. But uh, but as I say, this is bad people. It's not unique to us. It happens all the time to other churches, too. So. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. I just got, as I was talking to you, I got another email from somebody else that says, hey, do you need help? <sighs> Not a violent man, but if I can get a hold of some of those folks. All right. So I'm sorry about that, but it's become, a, I'm getting an awful lot of them. I just need you all to know that. Yeah, Carrie says always, please report the email, but who do you report it to, right? And um, the other thing is, anyway. Here we go. I want to end on a bad note, <laughs> but we got to pray. We got to pray. All right. Lord, we come to you, and there's a lot of things in this world that sometimes we don't understand, and it angers us sometimes. And, um, so we just want to protect everybody who might be trying to be scammed. Not only what we just talked about, Lord, but uh, in all things. These are people that are just uh, trying to take people's money unlawfully. So, Lord, uh, we just ask for protection for all those, that these people might be exposed uh, that uh, that somehow uh, that uh, security might be ramped up so that these things don't happen anymore. But Lord, uh, that's just our problems here. We're also in this time of Easter, and we need to uh, we need to stop, and we need to realize just what was done for us in Easter. That it was you raising your Son Jesus Christ from the dead, but it, the purpose was for us, and that that is an act of love. And we've heard how you will periodically, from time to time, at your choosing, enter into this world and set things uh, set things right. And Lord, we know that there will come a time when Jesus will return, that that will be the final time that things uh, will be set right. We don't know that day or time, but in the meantime, we know that there's small miracles that we witness all the time. And uh, Lord, we just pray. We pray for those who are uh, hurting. We pray for those who are in need of, uh, need of healing. Uh, we pray for those who are troubled. And Lord, all of these things we lift up to you. We thank you for this time together. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, so that's it, folks. Thank you for joining me on this Monday. And I love you all. We'll be back with you on Tuesday, right? Nine o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, Judy Sutherland just said, um, yes, we pray. Prayers rising for Kathy Hazel. Absolutely. It's terrible uh, what's going on around here with the COVID situation. So please be safe. I know many of you probably are vaccinated already, but please get it. I just saw that, um, I just saw that uh, Wayne County's opened up some other vaccinations. One's in Taylor. It's a walk up. So it is available, and uh, they're making it available not only to 18 and above, but some of them are making it to 16 and above at this point. You can always go down to TCF Center. If you live in a, in, um, in a, a city that uh, adjoins Dearborn, all of those cities are joined together, and they go look at the City of Dearborn website, and you can see that there's COVID. There's a sign up there. They're doing it in the Performance Arts Center, and um, they do a really good job. That's where I got mine. So please get vaccinated. So, you know, and the more the more people that get vaccinated and the quicker that it happens, the quicker we can get back to some normalcy. All right.
God bless you all. Love you. Bye-bye.